who will talk about recent progress on self-risk conjecture. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be back. And uh, this I'm going to talk about uh, some recent joint work of mine with various subset of uh, this tree on uh, the shell weight conjectures. And so I'll begin by uh, recalling the sort of prehistory, which is uh, Shea's original conjecture. So Shea's con so Shea's conjecture is the following statement. So I have a two-dimensional, absolutely irreducible representation of the Galois group of Q, which is odd. Odd means that the determinant of complex conjugation is minus 1. So this is odd. Um, and I guess it's unramified almost every, well, actually it doesn't matter. The image would be finite. So, so well, actually, unramified almost everywhere, just to be safe. Then, uh, Roba is relate, uh, related to modular forms. Then, Roba is modular in the sense that there exists F a uh, hospital hacker eigen form for some congruent subgroup SL2Z. Such that, so to such a form, uh, classical constructions attach to it a compatible system of periodic Galois representation. In particular, for the prime P, I would have the periodic Galois representation as attached to f, and I can reduce it mod p. And so th the assertion is that Robar actually comes as a reduction mod p of such an automorphic Galois representation. And uh, this, this statement can be phrased as saying that the characteristic polynomial of Frobenius, and probably one arithmetic Frobenius to be given in terms of the Hecke eigenvalues so of f. So let's see, a v of f t plus v to the well, let me just write it. So chi is the Nibin type of And k is a weight. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. So this holds for almost all v. Okay, so this would this this is Shear's original conjecture. So in fact, Shear goes further, and so this is certainly a pleasant statement. But uh, before it was eventually proved, it's in some sense a statement that's very hard to uh, falsify or verify, and. Share actually, actually went further and even predict not only does f such a robot come from uh, any eigen form, but it would come from forms of particular weights and level. In particular, uh, for the purpose of falsifying it, say, it would be uh, useful to make a precise conjecture where was smallest possible level and smallest possible weight. So, so this is called a weak form. So this is a weak form. So share. She actually formulated the strong form. And the strong form asserts that, uh, I won't uh, state kind of it completely, but I would just say that gamma can, take, can be taken to have prime to p level, such that in fact, the optimal level would be the kind of prime to p Atkin conductor of Roba. But I won't be interested as much in this aspect run 
has the next part, which says that among gamma with level prime to p, so among gamma as above, say, one can always take, so it's a feature that if you t look at modular forms mod p, uh, the notion of weight is much less rigid than in characteristic zero. A modular form mod p will have more, many more weights, will, will have infinite many weights. And um, in particular, um, so among gamma s above, shell would provide a recipe to get a weight that's particularly small, and small would be compared to p. So you can take the weight k. So I will state the sum of the recipe, but whatever this number is, it has the feature that it's between 1 and, let's see, I think p plus 1. Well, maybe original share had, had it got to be 2, actually. And uh, the flavor of this recipe is oops, the following. So, if, so the flavor of the recipe is that it outputs a k rho bar that actually depends only on the inertia, the restriction of rho bar to the inertia group at p. And so if this is isomorphic to, well, maybe I write it like this an extension between two characters. And let's say I take 1 less than a less than p minus 1. Then k rho bar is in the list of star is non-split. So, well, this is at least one element. But in the case extension is split, it comes, it can be taken to there are actually two possible small weights. Star is split. And in fact, both possibilities will occur. And, 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 those, are the, and those turn out to be the only possibilities for form of small weight. So small means less than or equal to p plus 1 uh, of weight k that can give a rise to such a rho bar. And well, actually, the recipe here is also also works when this is uh, a level two. Well, when rho bar restricted to up is uh, irreducible. In that case, it's uniquely of the form. And in this case, k rho bar is also in here. Okay, so this is actually a slight modification of Shear's original recipe. He was literally interested in forms for gamma naught level. And so he didn't take, kind of he couldn't have taken weights as small as this, but rather, um, well, this would be for forms if you allow have forms uh, for things that are prime to p level, but uh, it's less than gamma naught. There's a problem with the neighbor type that you, uh, that shifts things around. But okay. So moreover, these are exactly Oh, and, and I should say, the without this uh, generosity condition, uh, the set of weights is also prescribed, but it becomes slightly more complicated, and it's tangential to my purpose, so I won't give it. These are exactly the weights. Well, maybe two, I think. That can, such that there exists a form f of some prime p level. Weight k and rho bar p. Okay, so. Uh, explain again. You mean that the, the low SP bar is some twist by a character of level p of. So what? Don't you mean because the way you formulated it, don't you mean to allow some twist in the. But, but. No, but I, I, I allow my gamma to be kind of gamma 1 or something. So I don't think I would need to twist. Okay. 
Okay, so this ah, so this is a strong form, and this recipe is called the weight part of shear conjecture. And well, I guess everyone knows that this was eventually proven by Hara and went to Berger and Kizin. And uh, but in true in the proof, they make essential use of the equivalence between the strong form and the weight form. Okay, so uh, now one of the goal is to kind of, uh, in fact, Cher originally already us given, so Cher came up with this recipe, apparently out of a black hole, and he uh, actually asked that uh, whether there's some kind of mod P Langlands philosophy that would kind of explain this kind of behavior. And the answer turned out to be yes, and in order to kind of uh, get to that, let me, sh it turns out to be essential to first give a more representation theoretic formulation of this story. So, the formulation. So, let's see, so let, let me just stick with this, with level prime to p. And so this gives me a model of curve of level gamma. And uh, for each k in L, I have, I have the representation gamma goes to GL2 that p bar, so in fact that p already. And th this has a natural algebraic representation namely sim, well, okay, k, and times determinant to some power. So given this data, this gives rise to, this data gives rise to an, well, uh, well this one here would be literally be a ZP bar local system on x gamma. And the reformulation starts with the Kind of Aishitashimura isomorphism, which allows you to interpret a classical modular form, an eigenform, is essentially the same data as uh, the system of Hecker eigenvalue. Well, okay, a system of Hecker eigenvalue. Con occurring in cohomology of the modular curve with this question, uh, which I called something. Yeah. So because this comes from a representation of gamma, this is an equivariant local system, an equivalent with respect to Hecker operators. And so the Hecker algebra acts on this, and you can uh, try to diagonalize. Well, you can ask what's, what's the support of the Hecker algebra that uh, this module has. and it turns out that the list of support is basically equivalent to the list of Hecker eigenvalues of an eigenform. So, so eigenforms are the same as system of Hecker eigenvalues. Okay, but then this allows you to naturally interpret that rho bar um, is modular if and only if exists a mod an FP bar system of Hecker eigenvalue. Well, this is uh, well, a homomorphism such that um, well, there exists an eigenclass in well, I'll take the, the thing above and reduce it mod P. with eigenvalue, with system of eigenvalue given by phi. And that's equivalent to, so this homomorphism is the same as the maximum ideal of the Hecker algebra. And this is equivalent to the localization at that maximum ideal to be non-zero. So 
Well, so one way to think about it is that systems of eigenvalues on group cohomology in the quantum local system are avatars of, so for characteristic zero questions, these are avatars of classical automorphic forms. And thus, for mod p questions like this, these are avatars of mod p modular forms. And so, well, so in this sense, Joe Bias modular exactly means it comes from a mod p modular form. So now the phenomena of a mod p modular form having many weights, weights of mod p modular form, is due to the fact that so this characteristic zero local system are irreducible for every k. However, when you reduce the symmetric k power representation of GL2 mod p, uh, most of them will not become will not be irreducible. They kind of break up into a smaller irreducible chunk. And it turns out that the irreducible, the irreducible always equivariant of P bar local system on X gamma kind of R, at least the one I care about R, given by symmetric k power of standard representation of GL2 over FP bar tensor with some power of the determinant. And in particular, K would be between 0 and P minus 1. Ah, and I forgot to crucially specify that this is form of where K plus 2, the, the power, the symmetric power, is the weight of the model form minus 2. OK? So very good. So this is explaining the bound kind of why you should expect to always be able to achieve k less than or equal to p plus 1, simply because those are all the possible irreducible p bar local system. And in this optic, did I start at 430? Ah, OK. OK, so in this optic, Shares recipe is a solution to the following problem. Shares recipe is specify all irreducible p bar local system V such that the system hacker eigenvalue occurs in. Well, it's a finite list, and sh well, this list has size something like p minus one, roughly of order p squared, and share actually pins it down to two. Okay. So this is a nice, uh, nicer looking statement because it this now lends itself to the obvious generalization. So every actor here. It meets an obvious generalization to the situation of just a general reductive group over a number field. So the modular curve should be replaced with uh, well, the locally symmetric space attached to this group. To Infinity, uh, what else? U, G, F. And for simplicity, I only study the situation that G is good. So, well, not just the everything I ever write is good at p. It's good at p. Which, in particular, allows me to write things like each representation, each rep of, uh, well, I guess, gl something of p bar gives rise to 
uh, an FP bar local system. On this roughly symmetric space, this is equivariant for the Hacker correspondence and its cohomology therefore admits an action of the Hacker algebra. So the general problem is then obviously, so, uh, oh yeah, and uh, for notational convenience, we would define a, a shear width in analogy with the weight of a mod p modular form is exactly an irreducible. is a modular representation. And there are only finally many of those. Okay, so the problem becomes, the problem that Shaz recipe gave a solution to is the problem that given a system of eigenvalue that shows up in some uh, cohomology of the locally symmetric space with respect to some coefficient, some FP bar coefficient, uh, what are the list of all possible irreducible ones that this n occurs? What is the list of v? Obviously, I only care about. I only have to care about the irreducible ones of v share weight such that cohomology and I would be lax without with saying which cohomology degree because because right now I will assume G is compact mode center. So, so this is kind of the basic problem. So note this is actually a statement purely uh, well you can think of as a purely topological statement even. So All right, so so let's see. So from now on, G is compact mode center. GR, well, I guess G of infinity is compact mode center. And the effect of that is that this is a zero-dimensional manifold, and there's only one possible cohomology group that I can take. So that H naught X E V, these are uh, so the gross, these are kind of, this is what gross defines to be an algebraic automorphic form. And as the problem doesn't actually simplify in any substantial way under the simplifying hypothesis. So I'll just focus on this. All right, so the basic question is actually, what, what should the answer be? Or what shape should the answer take? So there are uh, a few guiding principles of philosophy so the guiding principles are so the first is that just as for the case of the modular curve even though this is a purely automorphic statement or kind of it's a statement about congruences between automorphic forms the answer is uh, somehow should be phrased in terms of the Galois representation associated with it so whatever it is uh, should be given in terms of Robert, the Galois that associated to my system Hecke eigenvalue. So this is a mod p thing because I have a mod p system Hecke eigenvalue. Unfortunately, uh, I think this is known to exist. So at least this is not an empty, well, this is a well-defined uh, thing one can ask for. Uh, but, uh, but the extra 
guiding principle comes in the form of a, a kind of the existence of a okay. the heuristic is that there should exist a mod p lambda correspondent that satisfies a form of local global compatibility and so so usually if you take characteristic zero coefficients you somehow expect to decompose characteristic zero cohomology into well, well, well if you localize at a system of if you take the, the, the part that are actually that are literary eigenclasses, then you should really expect it to decompose as tensor product over the local pieces of your thing, and then taking uh, invariance with respect to the level. So the mod p lang thing can be phrased in the following way. So I can take the limit as the level, uh, I guess, at p, at p goes to well, yeah, I make the level at p goes to, well, in fact, let me take everything goes to one. Then, that's this space. Well, actually, I take constant coefficient. And so this, so this is, the, in this case, this is the only completed cohomology group for it, not mod p completed cohomology group of the locally symmetric space. And the expectation in analogy with the characteristic zero story, it would be that it's basically, and I look at literary eigenclasses in here, it should literally be decomposing as a tensor product of V over all places, chi V of Copa. And now, all this cohomology with question system can be recovered from this uh, kind of top level gadget by the Hochschild schwer spectral sequence, which actually collapses in this case. And so what I have would be ch -ch -ch u p, that's away from p, and dual. So we have. This is exactly, well, sorry. So this, on one hand, is equal to exactly the cohomology group I would be interested in, or the part that's actually killed by M. And on the other hand, if I believe this expectation, this is literally home, you away from P, U, this is my UP, um, V dual tensor of pi v for bar. And so what it should be is essentially something like home of v dual into all the places above p, g o at p, pi v for bar, and then tensor with some junk multiplicity spaces away from. So the expectation, therefore, so this, this naturally leads to kind of, so this, this tells you that this problem about asking which irreducible V uh, does M contribute, does V contribute to is equivalent to asking what, if you believe this expression, is equivalent to what is the circle, the G O F P circle of this uh, mod P lang lens correspondent, this hypothetical mod P lang lens correspondent of rho bar. And so the this leads to the expectation that the set of the set of sh share weight of rho bar has to have a particular kind of shape. So this is the set, the list of weights that phi contributes to. Has the form? It's kind of can be thought of as it decomposes. So each share weight to begin with. It's irreducible thing it composes as a tensor product. But part of this expectation would imply that not only that, but there exists actually for each V dividing P a collection W V of rho bar G F V, namely the circle of the rep local representation at V, such that the list is exactly obtained by taking one thing in this allowable list at each place of V and then tensor them together. 
because this is the expectation from kind of mod p lang lens correspondence. All right, and finally, an extra piece of guidance is that um, kind of let's see, PR Descartes theory constraints kind of the allowable or for that matter, this thing. In the following way. So, because if W is a characteristic zero, uh, right, let's say, with such that kind of a share weight of that robot contributes to lifts in the Jordan Hölder factor of its mod P reduction, then in this setting, then robot has. Uh, an automorphic lift lift with kind of weight w and uh, well automorphic forms with weight w that is have a kind of very particular shape uh, has local has a local representation that has very particular shape and since rho bar arises as a mod p reduction of this the local part of Robert must be the reduction of a partic in a particular constrained way. And so one of the basic principles of how this, how the conjectures I'm about to state are formulated is that in some sense this is exactly, the o this is the only constraint on such a, uh, on, on so some of this constraint would uniquely determine WB. Okay, so what are the conjectures that exist? So varies with the level, it varies with the group. So the kind of, of course, we have the GL2 situation, which doesn't quite fit in the framework of compartment center, but it's kind of similar. So when G is a, f a form of GL2, so a unity group in two variables, or D cross for Cartesian algebra, then this is then kind of uh, one has the buzzard diamond Jarvis conjecture. So this is the earliest attempt of a generalization of the weight part of Shear's conjecture uh, over a total real field. Well, it's, but if I'm a unitary group, I'm over a CM extension. Then kind of the BDJ conjecture basically is of the following nature. Predicts the set of model, model weights for Roba as exactly this expected form. And, and in fact, uh, with what I said, you should expect this to depend on the local representation V, but uh, further heuristic from the mod P Langlands correspondent actually expect it to depend only on the restriction to inertia at V. With I won't say the precise recipe, but the flavor of it is that it's an explicit, in the sense, combinatorially explicit. Just like Shear's original recipe, if you are omega i direct sum with omega b, I have a list that cooks out of a and b. Combinatorially explicit list for if rho bar over ifv is semi-simple. And the static semi-simple is equivalent to being tame. And it's defined in terms of existence of crystalline lift. So it's based on the third point that I mentioned uh, otherwise. So And the good news is that this conjecture is basically proven. So, the mark is that 
this is known. This is now known. So certainly for p bigger than 2, and maybe even p with 2. Uh, so this is kind of a long series of work of G and a uh, various set of collaborators. Just many. OK. So uh, how about this? So given this, this, this situation I would be interested in is the situation on what kind of conjecture one could make for higher rank groups. And as far as the literature is concerned, there's essentially, so for higher rank groups, it's kind of a most general uh, version uh, conjecture that one is willing to make in the literature is uh, the conjecture formulated by Florian Herzig, and it's amplified a bit by G. Herzig Sabe. So it's kind of the basic principle is the same. So, of course, it, it has this factorization, and the main content is in how, how would you define this WV? It's defined. But in principle, explicitly by a reduction, by mod p reduction of the Lee Lustig representations. Well, I, I, I will just stick to the compact mode center case. I mean, this is a purely local problem, and uh, all, all most of the interesting feature is already present here. And this, for simplicity, you could just assume it's split at all places of P. This recipe should depend only on data at P of G, uh, well, I guess G O F P of P. And I guess important restrictions are that this group better be unramified. So the conjecture is only being made when the group is unramified at P. And also, rho bar is tame at P, semi-simple. And perhaps even uh, the, the, the recipe uh, I would give also should only work if this is generic enough in a kind of precise sense. So I will illustrate. Okay, so, so that's, this is kind of the flavor of the conjecture. Um, to have a kind of more precise feeling for this, uh, it's best if I just discuss the example of G being a form of GLN, if everything is split at P. So concretely, and maybe even for just GL3. So, so let's, let's say, so this is a purely local recipe. And so I restrict to this kind of local group at the place above P. So G is GLN divided, let's say, even over QP. So G over FV is this. Then what is this recipe? So rho bar, if I'm assuming it to be semi-simple, it's classified by a discrete amount of data. This is classified by because everything is going to be an induction of a completely reducible representation from some unramified extension, ah, I guess MQP. And thus, it's classified by uh, just a data of an element of the Val group, which records which extension you have to go up to to induce up back to this, and a tuple of numbers. So and the lambda is a character of the torus for GLN. So this is just a tuple of number. These are called the inertial weights. So for example, uh, the tuple one, so I, this is not a bijection. There's an equivalence relation on this set of pairs that gives the same representation. So this would correspond to just literally being sum of direct sum of cyclotomic characters. And the exponents, the inertial weights, are exactly given by this character of the torus. So it's very simple. And if W is, say, a transitive element of uh, Sn, then it would be an induction from there, and that's going to be irreducible. 
Okay, so the, the semi-simple row bars are finite in number. And and what happens is that Florian Hedrick associates to this combinatorial data that detects uh, this combinatorial data flow bar by FV, so this pair. So this pair one has an obvious way to associate a Delin-Lustig representation. So which are irreducible, well, if this is generic enough, irreducible characteristic zero representation of, yeah, of the group GLN FP. So which I just call it. So this doesn't say anything. But it says that, in particular, well, if you know what it is, then you know what it is. But if you don't, then at least you know in this case it is the principal series representation. GLN P, pick the choice of a Borel, and this is uh, and this is a Teichmüller character. Okay, so. In the, in the case of, uh, well, so if you know what this is, what this, how this is constructed, the W is recording the class of the uh, Fabian stable torus in GLN. So W equals one plus one exactly, if you take the split torus. And then you literally are uh, principal series. And this character, so the torus just literally records what character you are inducing from. So, so that is the flavor of this kind of the linguistic representations. And the precise recipe I, I can now state. So I, I can define an operation an involution on the set of characters of, of the end, which concretely would literally just, uh, it's, it's an involution, but it's not quite a reflection. It reverses something. So this is ooh, it's essentially the action of the long element of the Vi group plus. This is the same as saying it's like W naught. The long element reverses the order here, plus P minus two times eta. And eta here would be a lift of half of the sum of positive roots by SLN. So it's this one that I'm choosing. Okay? So there's some Ah, and now I should the recipe. And the recipe is then very simple. The bar of IFV is literally uh, you apply this operation to the set of jordan hurdle factor of the semi-simplified reduction of this delin lustig representation. So in this, in this case, what I would have to do is I compute the mod p reduction of this principal series representation, and then to each jordan hurdle factor, I apply this operation, and that gives me uh, the list. Oh, and I think I forgot to say that in this case, irreducible modular representation. You know, remember that irreducible FP bar rep of GLN FP are classified by um, well, not quite the P 
character lattice, but a restricted region of the character lattice, which you can completely think of as the region of tuples where the tuple is dominant in, let's see. So this is called the restricted region, P restricted region. I'm, I'm explaining Florian's conjecture, and that conjecture was made only for semi-simple robot. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure where that was. Uh, that, that, that is in place once I started kind of, uh, the word concretely somewhere. OK, so this is the P restriction. Uh, well, and kind of this is actually modulo an obvious notion. You can uh, translate this by some number times 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and if that number is divisible by P minus 1, you get the same representation of the finite group. So this is modulo sum p minus 1 times 1, 1. OK, so very simple. So now, <coughs> let's actually kind of un unpackage a little bit what this thing is. So in general, for GLN, computing the mod p reduction of a principal theory representation or any delinistic representation is uh, pretty hard. There is, it is actually combinatorial explicit, but the combinatorial complexity goes very rapidly. As an illustration, let me kind of just uh, write down some numerology. So when n equals 2, this, the size of this list, which is equivalent to the size of the number of listing jordan hilder factor of a generic Berlin district group. So I should say everything Lambda is always assumed to be generic enough in the sense that so lambda is a character of the torus, and it's supposed to be far away from all the p words. And in such a situation, a general modular representation theory tells you that a linguistic representation has a generic decomposition pattern in the sense that uh, the behavior of the decomposition doesn't change if I modif if I perturb lambda in a way that never that sta still stays a far away from the walls. And so when n equals 2, this number is 2. And this is why, for the semi-simple robot and shares recipe, generically, you, only s you have exactly two weights. For so n, the n in GLN. So this, it becomes, well, 9. That's much larger than 2. For uh, two minutes, okay. So for GL three, oh four, it becomes um, eighty eight. For five, I think it's several hundreds, and for six, it's probably like s over ten thousand. So, so well, not only is the number of things huge, um, well, actually, kind of writing down, writing all of them down is a combinatorial formidable problem, even though there's, an, there's, in principle, an explicit algorithm that allows you to generate everything from a basic list. So this is quite complicated. So W3 is uh, complicated to compute. That's the moral. Nevertheless, inside it, there's always a set of basic things that you can write down. So this is the set uh, the axis n factorial obvious way. Obvious. Show it in this list. And the, the reason for the word obvious, the word obvious is going to be twofold. So this is because a delin rustic representation, for example, the principal series representation, always comes with n factorial obvious irreducible constituent which basically follows from the fact that there's a character of the Borel in here, and that will generate a highest weight representation. That gives you one factor. But the principal series representation uh, have intertwiners that lets you permute this uh, character of the Borel, and that generates you n factorial things. So, so the of this is, is much faster than n factorial. Oh, yeah. It's, it's much, yes. n factorial here is like 6, 24. Uh, I don't actually know. 
I, I couldn't find anything in the literature. So it's yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's much bigger than f factorial. So if you want precisely, the number is like, ah, oh crap. So, um, well, you can decompose the dominant chamber into alco with respect to the f and y group. And you look at everything, every alco that's below the top peer restricted one. So inside here, inside this parallelogram, you have n minus one factorial of that. As n grows, there are tons of junk outside here, and this actually dominates. So the, the n factorial comes from this tin region, and well, and it's it, it's it's encoded in some combinatorics of the symmetric group uh, of uh, of the f and y group. And so. I said, so this is the first reason these are called obvious. And actually, these are very easy to write down in the case rho bias, the direct sum of cyclotomic characters. These are literally the shared weight with highest weight uh, S minus eta. And S is any element in SN, so n factorial, n factorial. And the second reason this is obvious is because it's, uh, in some sense, compatible with the periodic Hodge theory constraint. Uh, it's also obvious because this row bar uh, admits an obvious crystalline lift of this weight. Uh, so I should actually be more precise in writing this. This is not always dominant. You have to make it dominant by shifting by p minus ones. And then there's a unique way to make it dominant and p-restricted. So admits uh, obvious crystalline lifts of those weight. Of weight. Of this weight. Namely, how, how you, so as you, it's easy to lift the cyclotomic character. But the cyclotomic character mod p is defined only mod p minus 1. So once you take the cyclotomic character, you can add any multiple of p minus 1 without changing the mod p representation. So all you do is you literally take uh, a one plus some amount of p minus one. So you can permute this and then add in random chunks of p minus ones. And to for each permutation, there's a unique way to add p minus one to get something that's p restricted and dominant. And that's the recipe. Okay, so that's very good. And and in some, se in some sense, you can actually start from this obvious weight and generate everything. However, such a generation depends on decomposing a vial module in characteristic zero mod p. And unfortunately, that's very complicated because, well, this is the, the decomposition of pattern of those is given by Lustig's conjecture. And so in terms of something of Kashi and Lustig polynomials, which means something complicated. So, well, you have a lot of trouble actually writing down everything. So anyway, so now I can sort of state what kind of progress we made. So, well, let's see, let G be a unitary group, compact mod center, basically, in n variables for a CM extension, and F is, as always, unramified. P, and this should split at P. So assume I have a system of eigenvalue whose associate Galois representation has big image. And for those who know it, it just means it satisfies the Taylor Wise condition uh, such that rho bar has large image. And some s minor ramification hypothesis. This is, these are not essential. Of v not dividing p. So then what happens? So the first thing is that, ah, right, I should also assume that rho bar is tame simply because there's no conjecture otherwise. It's semi-simple and uh, generic enough. And the meaning of generic enough means you are sufficiently far away from an alcohol wall in this picture. 
So the first thing is that, uh, so Herzig's conjecture is true in this case. Well, in the case n equals 3 holds for image group in three variable with which are kind of everything is good at p. And for, for general n, so I guess this is like, so complete this. This is three of the four. Uh, for general n, there's always inclusion. So this is called, this is a list of uh, shell weights that Roba is modular in. And this is an explicit list that's constructed by at six recipe. So in general, uh, at least you have one inclusion. And furthermore, if an obvious way, if, if there exists V uh, in So if, I, if my row bar is modular with one of the obvious weights, then it's going to be modular of all the obvious weights. So all obvious weights are in. Maybe let me comment a little bit. So remarks. So for part one, there's our earlier work of Emerton G. Oh no, yes, Emerton G is proven who's the type L and Herzig. Uh, proves a, s a version of uh, proves this for kind of like QP for FV equals QP in row bar irreducible by a kind of rather different method than what we use. The argument is purely representation theoretic. Um, well, but I forgot what I wanted to say. Two. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Ah, yes, what I want to say is regarding this. So there's also earlier related word of Barnett Lamb uh, Gertie and G, who proves not quite this, as, uh, not quite the modularity of the obvious weight, but they prove that under the assumption that you are modular with respect to uh, actually a frontend of um, that f lambda is in with lambda in the bottom alcove. So there are n minus one factorial alcove that goes with respect to a hierarchy with respect to an ordering and bottom means your bottom, bottom alcove. Then uh, for all obvious weight, uh, they can't quite show that F l the share weight of weight l lambda prime is obvious, but they can show that some jordan Herder factor of a corresponding my vial model mod P must also be modular. OK. and I minutes left, so uh, maybe I should s summarize uh, the main strategy. So the, the main method is to kind of use the, well, the formulas of uh, the Taylor-Wise method in the form of patching functors, which basically pieces all these cohomology groups into modules over local deformation rings. And this has a virtue that it detects exactly the list of shear weight to be things whose patching functor is non-zero. And then the question becomes, how do you show a bunch of um, mod patch modules actually have non-trivial support? And ultimately, this reduces to a question about studying geometry of some Galois deformation rings. And that's actually where uh, the stuff happens. Uh, of Galois, local Galois deformation ring. So, so local. yes, so, uh, so more precise to kind of potentially crystalline deformation rings. And so the main progress has been made on that front. I think I'm sort of over time, so.